Hi, myself Dr. Rashmi Amardi. I'll be handling the course Microcontroller and Embedded System Laboratory introduced by VTU for the fourth semester CSE and ISE branch. The course is divided into two parts. The first part is on assembly language programming for ARM processor. The second part is the interfacing program. The execution of these programs are being done by Keel Microvision 4. The reference material is ARM System Developer's Guide by Andrew. Before we start executing the program, let's have a quick look at the registers that are needed in this ARM processor. ARM is a 32-bit long processor. It has 37 registers, of which 30 are general purpose registers, one program counter, one current program status registers and we have five dedicated saved program status registers. In the general usage of the ARM processor, we have R0 to R12 registers, registers for a particular set. R13 is for stack pointer. R14 is a link registers. R15 is a program counter and we have CPSR. The CPSR is divided into conditional flags, which are a negative flag, zero flag, carry flag, and the overflow flag. We have interrupt mask and the processor mode. Now, as we go further into the programming, we will study more about these conditional flags. The major data processing instructions are data moment, arithmetic instruction, logical instruction, comparison instruction, and multiply. Now, before I start with the instructions in detail, let's have a look at the syntax of data processing instruction. We in start with an operations. There is a condition which executes those conditions which satisfies the conditional flags. S is a suffix in data processing instruction, and it updates the conditional flags. R, N, and R, M are the operands on which the operation need to be performed. The result of this operation is stored in the destination register, R, D. We will con consider the condition and S more in detail as we go further. My explanation for all the programs goes with the related instructions in the program and the explanation to the program later which we will also see how the execution is being done now to start with let's look at the structure of the program we start the program by few of the assembler directives the first assembler directive we start is area which is an assembler directive which allows the programmer to specify the memory location to store the code and the data. My code is the user specified name that you want to give to the structure of the program. Code indicates that it is an executable and these are the machine instructions that we want. By default, it is read only. That means at the time of execution, we are not writing into this location. Entry is the assembler directive, which indicates that the first instruction to be executed in the program. We have a start. It is not an assembler directive, but it's a label that we are going to give to indicate that it is the start of the machine instructions. The last line of this program is an end assembler. This is going to tell that we do not have more codes to follow, and it is the end of the program. As in any other programming language, we can give the comments. The comments are given by semicolon. This indicates to the assembler to ignore the line followed with the semicolon. Now, the program that we have follows with few important instructions. The first instruction that we need to study is the register moment the value that I have to move between the register or to initialize a register value, we have the instruction called as move. This instruction will have move condition S, RD the destination, N is an operand. We specify N as an operand because it can be an immediate value that we are moving to the destination register 
or N can also be any of the general purpose registers. The two move instructions are move, which moves the value between the registers, or in this example, you are seeing the number 35 is moved to the register R1. Whenever we are moving a value, we prefix it with the hash symbol. MVN is going to store the negate value of the operand that is there. That is, if you specify an instruction as MVN R3, R2, the negate value of R2 is stored in the register R3. Okay, the next instruction is multiplication. We have two multiplications instruction. One is MUL, the other one is MLA. MUL stands for multiply. That means it multiplies the con contents in the register R0 and R3 and the result is stored in R2. We have another in multiply instruction which is called as multiply and accumulate. That is, it multiplies the values in the register R3 and R2. This R1, the sum is added to this product and the result is stored in the destination register R4. Now, the very first program that we have in the course is a simple program, write a program to multiply two 16-bit binary numbers. We are trying to multiply the numbers 6400 and 1200 in this case. So, the program always starts with the word assembler directive, which is an area. The name that is given is multiply. It is user specified. You can give any name to it but i specify it as multiply so it is easier for us to know that it's a multiplication that we are doing we have the assembler directive code read only entry is the starting point of the program start is a label that is specified now the first instruction is the move it is an immediate value we are moving the value that is 6400 so we precede the number with a hash symbol R1 now contains the value 6400, but in the assembler, we will be storing the value in the hexadecimal number, which is 1900. We move the next number that we have to multiply to the register R2. MUL is an instruction which multiplies the contents of the register R1 and R2, and the result is stored in R3. We have a uh, instruction called as B, which means the branch to a line labeled with the word stop. That means here is the label stop. So it, it has to branch back to the same line. That is, it's a, it goes in an infinite loop. This way is a convenient way for ending the program. So before we write the word end.